Okay. Um, my opponent, Min, pointed out that doctors are the ones to be trusted. And in Oregon, under their model, through experience and knowledge on the subject, doctors, um, we believe, will adopt the traits to know what to do. It's just like anything, when it gets started, it's going to be faulty at first. But um, through the years, my partner and I believe that the system will become almost flawless. Um, the opposition likes to point out the slippery slope claim, which doesn't have much evidence to back it up. Um, the rates of euthanasia in Netherlands have decreased, actually not increased, like the opposition slippery slope argument would suggest. Agnes van der Heide, the senior researcher in the Department of Public Health at Erasmus University, uh, says that in 2005, of all deaths in the Netherlands, 1.7% were the result of euthanasia and 0.1% were the result of physician-assisted suicide. These percentages were significantly lower than those in 2001, when 2.6% of all deaths resulted from euthanasia and 0.2% from assisted suicide. Of all deaths, 0.4% were the result of the ending of life without an explicit request by the patient. Continuous deep, the, uh, continuous deep sedation was used in conjunction with possible hastening of death in 7.1% of all deaths in 2005, significantly increased from 5.6% in 2001. And 74% of all cases of euthanasia or assisted suicide in 2005, life was ended with the use of neuromuscular relaxants or barbiturates. Opioids were used in 16.2% of cases. And in 2005, 80.2% .2 of all cases of euthanasia or assisted suicide were reported. Physicians were most likely to report their end of life practices if they considered them to be an act of euthanasia or assisted suicide, which was rarely true when opioids were used. Um, also, the Netherlands does not have a greater rate of non-voluntary or involuntary euthanasia than other Western countries. Penny Lewis, a reader in law at the School of Law and Center of Medical Ethics at King's College, says that most critics rely predominantly on Dutch evidence of cases of termination of life without an explicit request as evidence for the slide from voluntary euthanasia to non-voluntary euthanasia. According to three national surveys of medical behavior which shortens life in the Netherlands, the cases in the termination of life without an explicit request category represent less than 1% of all deaths. The critics who rely on this slippery slope argument often omit two important elements, thereby using flawed logic. First, the argument is only effective against legalization if it is legalization which causes the slippery slope. Second, it is only effective if it is used comparatively to show that the slope is more slippery in the Netherlands than it is in jurisdictions which have not legalized assisted suicide or euthanasia. Since these questions have not been addressed by critics, little attention has been paid to available evidence on causation and comparability. Also, another point trying to be claimed is that pain can be managed, and although that may be partly true, not all of it is manageable in cases like chronic pain. And if the, pa the, and if the patient doesn't desire to manage it, then why should we put them through that? Many patients also state that they don't want to be heavily medicated, which seems to be the main alternative to physician-assisted suicide.